Hey everybody, another package has arrived. What a surprise, it's another waif and stray that's winged its way here from eBay. Give me that, which is a standoff, so we know that's broke, but I kept the screw. So there you go, I've turned the light on so you can get the full joy of all the filth inside this machine. We've got a VIC-2 chip, ceramic, no heat sink at all, a 6581, a SID chip. That's going to be the PLA, that's not even socketed. Nothing else is socketed, lovely rug rats everywhere. There's the missing post there, which I've got. It's pretty minging in there. Let's take this board out. It does not look messed around with. It's going to put some in the switch. So that's working. The fuse is working. So next stage is to get these out, this out. Might try the extractor. No choice. Okay, that's out. And you can see immediately we're missing a pin. Has been left in there. So this Vic will need a repairing. That's why I don't like using these. I'm not going to power it up. I'm going to take this off, test it on a breadboard, swap it out anyway, put some thermal grease in it, take this off, test it on a breadboard. That way I don't risk any of these chips. I have had it before where this has been putting out, so like 6 volts. I'm just going to throw some solder onto these to make it ease them up a bit. One over the two. This guy's out. Good job I did put it because it's pretty low. 4.8 should be 5. Replacement regulator brand new. 4.98 volts. Just going to put the uh, nut back on so a little bit of thread lock. So that's the regulator that was on the board. Looks a little bit high. It's a brand new one. A bit more like it. I think we'll go for that. The last thing I'm going to do is just check the power connectors here. They look okay. On the SID, that should show me 12 volts, and it does. And then four down from that, show me five volts. On the VIC-2 chip, you've got VSS is the bottom pin right down there. Top right, five volts, you've got 12 volts, 4.85. Let's just see if anything's getting hot. Anyway, going to try and repair the VIC-2 chip now. I'm going to nick one of these legs. Cut it down and try and solder it to that. That's the broken side. You can see on the pin to the left of it, it is corroded. I've tinned up the top part of the leg and now what I'm going to do is try and graft on a cut down socket leg. There's the finished job. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but she should hold, I think. I'll use that socket to be a carrier board. So the stress is on the socket and not the Vic 2. So now the Vic is in its little carrier socket, if you like, so that when I take it in and out, I'm taking it in and out of these and not this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test this VIC-2 in the uh, test rig. And I'm going to put the SID in the test rig and see if that works. On this board I know the only thing I've swapped is the, SID, uh, the VIC. So if it doesn't work, it's either the VIC or it's the connection to the VIC. So let's go test it. So the VIC chip has been salvaged. It doesn't actually look that bad. So let's do the SID. We've got a good SID as well because that's the, on the test rig. Are you ready? It's a moment of truth. Well, out of memory, Addy, in OK Ready. I am going to attempt to run the diagnostics cart. We're getting some corruption on the screen, and it's not actually running the diagnostic cart. See if the dead test cart could help us any. OK, so we're immediately getting flashes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to take it at face value, change U9, and then I'm going to try a trick that I saw on a gadget video, which is to piggyback it, you know, just put another identical 4164, I think these are RAM, um, piggybacked on the top and see if it makes any difference. And if it does, that will kind of give me a bit more confidence of, okay, maybe I should take that chip out. Because what I don't want to end up doing is you can end up in a situation where it tells you that, that RAM chip's bad. So you take it out, you put another one in, and then it tells you this one's bad. So you take it out, you put it, and then it tells you this one's bad. Because it's not actually the RAM, it's the chips that control the RAM. Just piggybacked it on there. Just going to try that, see if it makes any difference. It's getting further now. There's no white flashes, but it's not fixed it entirely. So I'm going to swap that chip out. 
Okay, that has made no difference. We've still got crap, still got garbage. Gets that far and then screen ram it fails. So I changed that one, piggyback to all of these. I'm starting to think, alright, it's no good. Hit that one, and lo and behold. So, cheers to Gadget for that video. Two RAM chips so far. So I thought I'd just run the diagnostics. And it's looking good, it's looking sweet. Even the CIAs look good. I learned a couple of things from this one. Uh, first thing is that the dead test cart's great, but it didn't solve everything this time. It pointed me to that chip and it was right, but then there was another chip it didn't pick up. And I think that's because it only tests the first little bit of memory. The other thing I've learned is that my DRAM tester doesn't work properly, because when I took that chip out and put it in my DRAM tester, my Arduino thing, it passed it. So all that remains to do is to patch the case up, clean the keyboard up. What I'm going to try and do is use acetone, it's a nail varnish remover, to melt the plastic together chemically and then just stick it, dab it all over that. And what it does, or what it should do, is melt the plastic. I should just do that. And there is the finished product. I'll test it for strength in a minute. The pillar repair worked perfectly. Um, it's all nice and clean and heat synced in there. And I thought, okay, I'll just test out a few games. So I ran R type that ran. And then I ran some other games and I thought, okay, it's all working. And I thought, I listened to uh, the music on the SID on Alien and look what happened. <laughs> Graphics in the middle have gone to absolute rot. See that half the characters are missing. Right, so it does actually work. What is going on here? Half the screen is completely kaput. Now what the actual, I mean you can play it. Can you hear that? The game seems to work. So it's giving me glitchy sounds. I'm on the SID tester. It's gone entirely through that with no issues at all. So the fact that it's passing every time on the uh, diode cart, the fact that it passes this memory test thing that I found, the fact that I'm getting sometimes sound corruption and sometimes graphic corruption, I'm going to go for the PLA. Substituted a plankton in there for the PLA, so I've got a socket in there. There we go, it was the PLA that was the issue. So definitely 100% the PLA. So this machine had one bad VIC pin, two bad RAMs and a failing PLA. So if you're getting games that are not quite, some of them are working, some of them aren't, maybe it's worth swapping out the PLA. I'm sure I'm not going completely spare. I put that Moody PLA into another machine. This was the one with the Moody CPU from another video. And lo and behold, I get the same crap. So you can get a PLA that produces graphical corruption like that, and that is definitely a flaky PLA. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for this one, but the story is far from horrible. Yeah, you might have noticed I've written tone deaf on there. Now, when I tested this machine initially, I took the SID out of this machine, put it in the test bench, and it worked flawlessly through the diode cart. I then also tested uh, the SID in this machine, put it back in this machine and tested it with the SID tester and it worked flawlessly. So I assumed the SID was good. After having put it all back together, I started testing a random selection of games and on some games, it will hit the wrong notes and it will sound like a drowned cat. Listen to this. This is bloody awful. Tone deaf. And then it started doing it on a diode cart as well. So I tore my hair out for thought, I'm not going to add this to this video because it's just going to go on and on and on. I've ch changed the socket, changed all the caps, and what I ended up doing is taking the SID from the test bench, putting it in here, and it worked fine. I then took the SID from this, put it in the test bench, and whilst it was better, it was glitching sometimes. Maybe 99% of the time it was fine and then on the odd note it wasn't. But I'm going to call it here, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead because if I try and chase this down this video is just going to go on and on and on and on and on and I'm pretty sure it's a glitchy SID. 
which is a shame because all the voices are there, all the noises are there, and 90, 95% of the time it's fine. But it seems to be occasionally putting the wrong note in the wrong place or putting the right note in the wrong place, if that makes sense. So that's going to wrap it up for now. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you all later. Cheers, bye.